In this video, I want to give you a tip and explanation for every single magic item in the game, all 23 of them. By the end of the video, I want you to know which ones are best and exactly how and when you should use them. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Juno Sloth. I want this video to explain everything there is to know about all of the magic items. What are they? How do you get them? What are their best uses? I've been planning on bringing you this video for a little while. However, with the Clan War Leagues wrapping up next week, I will be bringing you a video on how the Clan War medals are distributed and how to best use them. And within the shop, there is a lot of magic items, so it makes sense to bring you this one. If you do want to see the Clan War League medals video and all of my other educational but entertaining Clash of Clans videos, I'd recommend subscribing and also turning on the notification bell. Quick shout out to the Creator Boost as well. If you want to support your favorite creator, you can do so before making any purchases within the shop. My code is Judo and it is much appreciated, my friends. Starting out real quick, it is important that you you understand what magic items are, why they were introduced to the game, because this will mean that you then know why they are of benefit to you. Now, magic items were introduced in the December 2017 update. It really doesn't seem that long ago. However, they were introduced to allow you to upgrade your base faster. It doesn't matter how much loot it would take you to upgrade something if using a hammer or how long that upgrade would take if using a book, it meant that the game could be sped up and it could be sped up relative to each town hall level. It also meant that it wouldn't break the economy of the game since the magic items were a whole separate currency, if you will. There are currently four different ways that you can obtain magic items. The first being the clan games, which the caravan is not there at the moment, so I can't show you. The second being the season pass. It doesn't matter whether you have the gold pass or the silver pass, you will be able to obtain some magic items. The third is in the events tab. Often events will reward you with magic items and the fourth is either purchasing them if there are any packs available in the shop or from the trader with his daily deals. With regards to the daily deals, are any of them worth it? Well, there's often some free items so keep a lookout. However, it comes down to what you are trying to upgrade at any given time. For me, the best value items are the training potion for 25 gems or the book of heroes for 500 gems. I personally don't purchase any others but if you do, you can let me know down in the comments. The other points you should be aware of before we start explaining the items is that you access them via your town hall or your builder's hall. Now the menu displays all of the magic items even if you don't have them which I really like. Also notice that there is a limit to the magic items which is clearly displayed. You can overstack this if you are purchasing the items from the shop via any offers. The other thing you should know is that you can actually sell back your magic magic items for gems. However, this is not the value of the item itself, so I would rarely recommend it unless you can't hold the item and you are forced to sell it back, such as through the season pass. So let's get to explaining all of the items. I want to group them together. There are video chapters within this, so you can skip ahead to whichever section you want. I try and do that with all of my videos because I do think it helps out. I will first explain the potions, then we will go through the two miscellaneous items items, which is the Shovel of Obstacles and the Wall Ring, before explaining all of the runes, the books, and finally the hammers, how exactly you should use them and their best uses. First up, we have the Power Potion. Now, my tip for the Power Potion will go hand in hand with the Hero Potion, but the Power Potion allows you to boost your troops and spells to the maximum level for your given laboratory. So what this means is if you upgrade your Town Hall, then you upgrade your laboratory at that Town Hall and you unlock all of the new troop and spell levels, you can actually use the maximum level of all of them for one hour by using the Power Potion. Now, that's that doesn't sound like much, but if you are going to be doing a really important war attack or a lot of high trophy pushing attacks, it might be of use. It goes without saying you want to use the power potion and the hero potion when you're going to be active for the longest time, so you get the best use or the most important use. The hero potion works very similar, but it gives you five extra troop levels to all of your heroes, so that again could be really important. 
Now, my main tip for you is whilst you can activate the power portion or the hero portion via the menu and it will kickstart the one hour, you can also do this at the start of the attack. So if you want to get more time out of the portions, i.e. maximize your one hour, you would wait until you are about to attack before you use the power portion and the hero portion. However, if that's a bit risky for you, you are worried about forgetting, then just use it from the town hall and whilst you will miss a minute or two it means you have the troop and hero levels for that very important attack also know that you can clearly see when the potions are active from your army selection menu as well as the time remaining on each potion any troops or spells that are boosted will have a blue flame indicating that and any heroes will have a purple flashing icon also note that when you are scouting for a war attack, often the blue flames are not displayed. So if you want to double check, come back to the home village, check your army screen to make sure that you have the potion active. Next up, we have the training potion. This for me is my most used magic item by a long shot, and I'm sure it is for most of you guys. It allows you to boost the production of your army, everything about it, barracks, spell factory, workshop, hero regeneration, by four times the speed. If we take a look at my troop training menu, you can see that it will take roughly 30 minutes for my entire army to be made. You can use the potion from within the magic item menu or by selecting selecting any of the buildings that it will impact. Then, using the portion, you will be able to see that the buildings are boosted because of the green circle around them. And when we now look at my troop training menu, you can see that the required time has decreased dramatically. And you can also see the double green arrow to show that the portion is active. I also want to let you know that if a maintenance break were to happen, the game will actually save how long you had left Left on your portion. You can then re-enable it when you are ready and you can see within the troop training menu, much like the hero and the power portion, how long you have left on the boost. Now I did mention that the 25 gems from the daily deal was definitely, in my opinion, the best value. Now let's calculate that for you. If you were to boost it individually and you had all of the barracks, that is 30 gems. All of the heroes is an extra 20 gems. That is already 50. With the spell factory, it's an extra 10 so 60 and with the workshop 30 so you are looking at 90 gems therefore 25 gems in the trader is definitely a good offer for you the builder portion is in my opinion one of the best in the game because it will boost your builders to 10 times their normal speed that means if you have any builders working and they have 10 hours remaining it will only take them one hour to complete which is pretty awesome to be honest with you now my main tip for the builder portion is obviously use this when you have most of your builders active right now i have six builders working so i am getting the maximum value that i can get from the builder portion always try and utilize them in this way you can tell that the builder portion is active from the green circle around the builder hut and the fact that the builder will work super fast making sure that the upgrades are done even quicker for you the clock tower portion is with regards to the builder base. Now, I don't need to go into any real depth on this because it basically gives you a 30 minute clock tower boost. So the clock tower is a building that allows you to boost your base for up to 30 minutes, depending on its level, for up to 10 times the speed. So very similar to the builder portion. However, this is for everything. It works for not just the buildings, but the resources and the research. Now, for that reason, much like the builder portion you want to use it when you have most of your base active in terms of upgrades research so that you're getting the best value the clock tower is separate because you want to try and use it every 22 hours however with regards to the portion utilize it 
when you have as many things active as possible. The final portion before we move on to the miscellaneous magic items is the research portion. Now this is all to do with the laboratory or troop and spell training and it's quite nice because for a one hour boost it will give you 24 times the speed. So what this means is if you have anything training you will be able to shave off an entire day within the one hour boost. The only time I would recommend not using the research portion is if you do plan on using a book anyways because it's not worth it or if you have less than one day remaining on the upgrade and you are not going to be upgrading something else straight away because you're losing part of the portion however if there is at least one day you can't really go too far wrong the first miscellaneous magic item is the wall ring. Now this allows you to upgrade one piece of wall within the home village or one block of wall within the builder base. The wall ring has a value per ring of 1 million gold or elixir in the home village and half a million gold or elixir within the builder base. The main thing you need to know about the wall ring and effectiveness of its use is that it will round up over. So let's say for example a piece of wall costs 2.7 million gold or elixir it will actually cost three wall rings the equivalent of three million hence it rounds up over so for that reason you want to try and use the wall rings on as close to a rounded number to a million as possible so that you are getting the best value per ring the other thing to note is that if you do have perks within the gold pass and you reduce the amount it costs per wall, the wall ring is not impacted. For example, if it normally costs you 5 million, you get the 20% perk and it now costs you 4 million, it will still cost you 5 wall rings. So for that reason, you would be better off using gold or elixir. The Shovel of Obstacles is one of the miscellaneous items, I would say, but it's one of the most valuable. It has nothing to do with upgrading your base. It is all to do with allowing you to move any obstacles on the side of the base. So previously, limited edition obstacles would spawn anyway, and you were stuck with it. You could not move them. And it meant that people would build bases all over the place trying to get a limited edition item to spawn. That all changed with the addition of the Shovel of Obstacle because you can now move them to anywhere in the base that you want. I'm actually going to have a little fortune tree garden down to the bottom of my base so you can move the obstacle with the shovel as simple as that. Now we move to the good stuff, the runes, the books, and the hammers. Now there are a couple of mistakes that you could make, so I do want to highlight them. However, with the rest of the magic items, they're pretty self-explanatory. So I'm not going to go into great depth, but I will explain what the magic items are and how to best use them. By the way, guys, if you do purchase G Fuel, remember you can use code JUDO at checkout in order to get yourself 10% off. Let's start off with the runes because I feel that makes most sense. You can gain a rune for any type of resource within the game other than gems. Gold, elixir, dark elixir, builder elixir and builder gold. What the rune will do is fill your storages to the maximum that they can hold. So if I were to use a rune of gold, it would fill my storage to the maximum, which at my level is 18 million. However, it will only fill it from what you already have. So currently I have 11.8 million, meaning I would only gain 6.2 million to get the gold to the maximum. For that reason, it makes sense to use the runes when you have the least amount of resource within your storages. That means that you get the most out of the rune because it is filling your storage. Also, the higher upgraded your storage is, the more the rune will give you. This is where the magic items we explained at the start of the video are relevant to each town hall level, basically. There's not a lot more to explain on the runes. Each resource has its individual runes, so if I use a rune of Dark Elixir, that is impacting the Dark Elixir, none of the other resources, obviously. We talked about its efficiency of use, which is pretty clear, but make sure you're trying to maximize that. The other tip I would give you is that if you are using a rune and your storage 
pages are full, then it makes sense to do an upgrade straight away. Use the rune when you are going to do an upgrade. Otherwise, you are leaving more loot in your storages and therefore more loot for your opponents to steal. What I do, and I'm sure a lot of people do, is combine the rune and the book usage. So let's explain the books. A book will instantly finish an upgrade. So you do have to have spent the resources in the first place to begin the upgrade, but then the time is skipped when you use a book. And there is a book for everything. Literally, the book of everything can be used on everything. However, the other books are specific to the upgrade. So for example, the book of heroes is used to upgrade the heroes. You can't use it on anything else. The book of building can be used on any buildings. Now my tip for the books is exactly the same irrespective of whatever book you are using. Because it is time which the book skips, you want to use them on the longest upgrade possible. So a real case scenario, in my video where I spent 165 million loot, I used a book of building on a wizard tower which had over 11 days. My other upgrades, I believe, had around about 7 days. Therefore, I accelerated 4 days of builder time by upgrading the wizard tower rather than anything else. So because the book skip time, use it on the longest upgrades. Finally, that leaves us with the hammers, which are incredibly rare. You will most likely get these from the Clan War League shop, although you can get them from some other methods. Obviously, I will be covering the Clan War League items within the video next week, so be sure to subscribe to see that. Whilst there is not a hammer of everything, there is a hammer for everything else. Fighting, spells, heroes, buildings, and the hammers will instantly upgrade whatever you use it on. You don't need to spend any resources and you don't need to wait the time. It is an instant upgrade. So let's say the Hammer of Heroes, if I use this on my Archer Queen, she will upgrade to the next level. I don't need to wait any time. I don't need to spend any resources. That is why they are amazing. They're almost a combination of the Rune and the Book. Now, because they're a combination, they're a little bit trickier to work out their best use. But basically, you want to try and use them on the most expensive buildings and the ones that will take the most amount of time. So what I will often do if I do plan on using a hammer and an upgrade at the same time is I will use the hammer for the final upgrade. So let's say season pass ends i am upgrading my archer queen i use the dark elixir and the book of heroes i upgrade the queen i will then use the hammer of heroes for the latter upgrade that means i'm getting the best value because the later upgrades will be more expensive and they will cost more therefore getting the better value I hope this video has been helpful for you, no matter what level you are in the game, I'm sure you can take something away from this, and it primes it nicely for the Clan War League medals video. Now, if you do want to see my previous video, I answered a lot of common Clash of Clans questions that you, my subscribers, submitted. I have the video on the screen here now, and I also have the subscribe button as well. You guys take care though, and I will see you in the next video.